Oh, look at this. What's this? I don't know. Welcome to our analysis of the 10 movies from the body horror genre. For those unfamiliar with the term body horror, also known as biological horror or organic horror, is a subgenre of horror that focuses on the disturbing physical transformation or degeneration of the human body. These films often explore the fears surrounding the loss of control and invasion of the body and the transgressions of social norms and taboos. Body horror films can be highly graphic and over the top in their depiction of physical degeneration and mutation, pushing the boundaries of what is considered acceptable on screen. These films often use special effects to create disturbing transformations, which can be quite elaborate and realistic. Overall, body horror films are known for their ability to shock and disgust the viewers, using the human body as a canvas for the grotesque and unsettling imagination of the human mind. Throughout this video, we will examine 10 films that exemplify the body horror genre and explore how they can use various techniques to shock and disgust disturb their audiences. These movies may feature grotesque makeup effects, disturbing imagery, and intense violence. Some may even push the boundaries of what a fan of the genre might consider enjoyable or disgusting. However, it is essential to note that these films are not for the fate of heart. They can be extremely graphic and may not be suitable for all audiences. If you're a fan of horror or are simply looking for something different, these 10 films may be right up your alley. But beware, they may leave a lasting impression on you long after the credits have rolled. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. The Fly, 1986. The Fly is a 1986 body horror film directed by David Cronenberg, a legend in the game. It is a remake of the 1958 film of the same name and stars Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, and John Getz. The film follows a brilliant but eccentric scientist named Seth Brundle who becomes obsessed with perfecting a machine that can transport matter through space. Brundle becomes romantically involved with a science journalist named Veronica Quaif and invites her to witness a demonstration of his invention, which he has named the Telepod. During the demonstration, Brundle puts himself in the transporter, but unbeknownst to him, he is completing the whole process with a common housefly, and the two organisms become fused together at the molecular level. As Brundle's transformation into a grotesque fly-like creature progresses, he becomes incredibly increasingly erratic and violent, and Veronica struggles to come to terms with what is happening to him. The film is known for its special effects which were designed by Chris Wallace and its exploration of themes such as the consequences of scientific experimentation and the dangers of hubris. The score for the movie was composed by Howard Shore and performed by the London Philharmonic Orchestra and was critically acclaimed. The Fly was a critical and commercial success and has since become a cult classic. A significant part of The Fly's viewership has questioned whether the plotline for the movie acted as a metaphor for the real-life difficulties of AIDS, but David Cronenberg has since come out to shut down such speculation by specifying that the AIDS connection is superficial. He added that instead he sees the movie as a depiction of the vulnerability of human life, its mortality and the tragedy of losing a loved one. One interesting trivia about the film The Fly 1986 is that the film's director, David Cronenberg, was originally approached to direct a remake of the 1958 film of the same name. However, Cronenberg was not interested in simply remaking the film and instead pitched his own original story, which incorporated elements of both science fiction and body horror. The final film ended up being a critical and commercial success, with Jeff Goldblum's performance as the scientist Seth Brundle receiving widespread praise. It has since become a classic of the body horror genre and has inspired numerous sequels and remakes. Shivers 1975 Shivers, also known as They Came From Within, is a 1975 body horror film directed by none other than David Cronenberg. The film follows the story of a scientist who creates a sexually transmitted parasite that causes its hosts to become highly promiscuous and eventually become mutated monsters. The parasite is introduced to a high-rise building through a sequence of unfavorable scenarios and quickly spreads throughout the building's residence, 
turning them into crazed monsters seeking nothing but another person's sexual availability. As the infection spreads, the residents of the building become more and more sexual and aggressive, leading to a series of orgies and violent attacks. The main character, a young man named Roger St. Luke, becomes surrounded by the infected and must fight off the hordes of people carrying the parasite in order to try to find a cure and save himself and his partner, Nurse Foresight. The film is notable for its controversial themes of sexual desire and losing control over one's body. It also features grotesque special effects, including the transformation of a character into a giant slug-like monster. Shivers received mixed reviews upon its release, with some praising its unique and disturbing themes, while others found it too graphic and disturbing. Despite this, the film has gained a cult following over the years, and has been noted as an early example of body horror in film. Overall, Shivers is a disturbing and thought-provoking exploration the dangers of unchecked desire and the horrors that can result when we lose control over our own bodies. The movie was filmed in an actual high-rise apartment building in Montreal, Canada. The film's budget was relatively low, so the production team had to work within the limitations of the building's existing layout and design. In order to create the film's grotesque special effects, the team used a combination of practical effects, including prosthetics and animatronics, and early CGI techniques. The film's use of real locations and practical effects add to its sense of realism and helps to immense viewers in its disturbing world further. Videodrome 1983 Videodrome is a 1983 science fiction body horror film again directed by the undisputed pioneer of the genre, David Cronenberg. The film explores themes of media manipulation and the blurred lines between reality and fantasy. It stars James Woods as Max Wren, a television executive who becomes embroiled in a series of disturbing events after discovering a mysterious pirate TV signal. As he delves deeper into the signal and its origins, he begins to experience strange hallucinations and physical transformations that blur the lines between reality and the world of Videodrome. With its surreal and disturbing imagery, Videodrome has become a cult classic and an ideal example of body horror and film. In the storyline, the protagonist Max Wren is the president of a small television station in Toronto. He is always on the lookout for new and controversial programming to air on his station. One day, he comes across a mysterious signal called Videodrome, which broadcasts violent and disturbing images of torture and murder. Max becomes obsessed with the signal and begins to investigate its origins. He meets a woman named Nikki Brand, who is a radio talk show host and is also interested in the signal. Together, they discover that the signal is being broadcast from a secret underground organization which is headed by a man named Brian Oblivion. As Max and Nikki delve deeper into the world of Videodrome, they begin to realize that the signal is actually a weapon being used by Oblivion and its group to manipulate the minds of viewers and turn them into mindless drones. Max becomes physically and mentally mutated by the signal and begins to lose his grip on reality. As the film progresses, Max must confront the true nature of the Videodrome and the power it holds over him. He is forced to fight for his own survival and confront the disturbing truth about the signal and its ultimate goal. Videodrome is a shocking and disturbing tale that explores the dangers of media manipulation and the blurred lines between reality and fiction. The Brood, 1979 The Brood is a 1979 horror film once more directed by David Cronenberg. The story follows a woman named Nola Carveth, played by Samantha Egger, who is undergoing experimental treatment for her emotional issues at a facility called the Soma Free Institute. Nola is being treated by a controversial therapist named Dr. Hal Raglan, who is played by Oliver Reed, who utilizes a technique called psychoplasmics to allow patients to physically manifest their emotional turmoil through grotesque physical mutations. As Nola undergoes treatment, a series of violent attacks occur in the surrounding area, with the victims displaying similar physical mutations to those Nola is experiencing. It is revealed that Nola is giving birth to a brood of child-sized creatures that are carrying out the attacks on her behalf. Nola's estranged husband Frank Harveth, portrayed by Arth Hindel, becomes suspicious of the Soma Free Institute and its practices and begins to investigate. He eventually discovers that Dr. Raglan is using Nola's emotional turmoil to manipulate and control the creatures, using them as a means of revenge against those who have wronged him. As Nola goes into labor, the brood attack and kill several people, including Dr. Raglan. Frank then arrives at the scene and tries to rescue his daughter, Candace Carvet, played by Cindy Hines, who has been taken hostage by the brood. 
Frank is able to rescue Candace, but Nola is killed by the brood in the process. In the final scene of the film, Frank and Candace are seen driving away from the scene, with Candace questioning whether the events that just took place were real. The film ends with Frank telling Candace that they will never speak of what happened again, implying that they will try to move on from the traumatic events that have occurred. This movie was considered one of David Cronenberg's more controversial storylines. The film explores the idea of psychotherapy and its potentially negative consequences, as well as themes of family and maternal love, which left a lot of information at the mercy of the viewer's interpretations, spiking speculations and discussions. Raw 2016 Raw is a 2016 French-Belgian horror film directed by Julia de Carnot. The film follows the story of Justin, a young vegetarian who is forced to eat raw meat as part of a hazing ritual when she begins attending veterinary school. As she begins to develop a taste for meat, she also starts to exhibit strange, aggressive behavior and a desire for human flesh. The film explores themes of identity and individuality as Justin struggles to reconcile her newfound carnal desires for her previously held beliefs and values. It also touches on the idea of the social and cultural expectations placed on women as Justine's transformation is met with fear and shame from those around her. As Justine becomes more and more consumed by her desire for flesh, she finds herself in a dangerous spiral of violence and self-destruction. The film's graphic imagery and disturbing themes have earned it a reputation as a controversial and provocative horror film. Overall, Raw is a thought-provoking and disturbing exploration of the dark corners of the human psyche and the lengths we are willing to go in order to satisfy our primal desires. It is not for the fate of heart, but those who can stomach its shocking content will be rewarded with a mind-bending and profoundly unsettling film experience. One interesting fact about the movie Raw is that it was the feature film debut of the filmmaker Julia de Cornell. The film was a critical and commercial success, earning numerous awards and accolades at film festivals around the world. It was praised for its unique and innovative storytelling and strong performances by the lead actors. Uh, yeah. Possessor 2020 Possessor is a 2020 science fiction horror film directed by Brandon Cronenberg, the son of filmmaker David Cronenberg. The movie is considered Brandon Cronenberg's venture into his father's coveted genre of films, as David Cronenberg is known for his work in the horror and science fiction genres. The plotline follows Tasha Voss, a corporate assassin who uses brain implant technology to take control of other people's bodies and commit murders on behalf of her clients. However, as she begins her latest assignment, things start to go awry, and she finds herself struggling to maintain control over the host body. As Tasha's mission becomes more complicated, she questions the morality of her work and the true nature of her own identity. The film explores themes of corporate greed, identity, and the blurred lines between reality and illusion. As Tasha continues in her assignments, she becomes increasingly disturbed by the actions she is committing while in control of the host body. She begins to question whether she is truly in control of her own actions or if she simply is a pawn being used by her superiors. As the film progresses, Tasha's doubts and fears come to a head as she struggles to maintain her sanity and her sense of self. Ultimately, Tasha must confront the dark forces that are manipulating her and decide whether to continue in her current path or break free and forge her own path. The ending of Possessor is a poignant and emotional one. With Tasha's loss in the battle of being a person with emotions and a loving family or a killing machine designed to be nothing other than an emotionless monster, serving as a tragic reminder on the consequences of corporate greed and the corrupting influence of power. It also serves as a commentary on the blurred lines between reality and illusion, as well as the complexities of identity. Possessor received positive reviews upon its release, with many critics praising the film's unique and disturbing visuals, as well as its strong performances from the lead actors. It was praised for its originality and for its exploration of complex and thought-provoking themes. The film was also praised for its portrayal of complex female characters, with Tasha Voss being a particularly well-developed and compelling character. Overall, Possessor is a highly regarded and successful addition to the science fiction horror genre. Tetsuo the Iron Man 1989 Tetsuo the Iron Man is a Japanese horror film directed by Shinya Tsukamoto. It tells the story of a metal fetishist who becomes obsessed with technology 
and begins to transform into a being made entirely of metal. The film begins with a young man who's obsessed with metal and fetishist about it, being involved in a car accident with a car that is being driven by a businessman and his girlfriend. The metal fetishist begins to experience strange metaphysical changes as a result of the accident and becomes increasingly obsessed with technology and the idea of merging with it. The businessman had started seeing visions of metal and industrial machinery after the incident took place. He was being tormented by such imagery and slowly strange sightings kept appearing in front of him and his body started morphing into metal. His transformation continues and he becomes more and more violent and erratic, causing destruction and chaos. Wherever he goes, he eventually comes into conflict with another cybernetic being known as the metal fetishist, who is also obsessed with technology and seeks to merge with it. The two engage in a violent, destructive battle, but the Iron Man ultimately emerges as the victor. However, the victory comes at a cost as the two realize the full extent of their transformation and the consequences of their actions. Then, as they fly about the city, they make a promise to convert the Earth into a planet made entirely of metal. Throughout the film, Tetsuo grapples with the loss of his humanity and the dangers of technology ultimately making a decision about his own faith. Tetsuo the Iron Man is a thought-provoking and terrifying exploration of the consequences of technology and the blurred lines between humanity and machine. The physicality of Tsukamoto's directing audio and visual cyberpunk onslaught that involves penetration by a power drill cannot be adequately described in a short summary. It's an unending nightmare of body dysmorphia and sexual suppression that has reached the point of abrasion and putrefaction. It's a surrealist masterwork that lasts barely 67 minutes and is possibly the pinnacle of body horror in film. Slither 2006 in the 2006 horror film Slither, the small town of Wheelsy, South Carolina, is overrun by a horde of flesh-eating monsters after a meteorite crashes to Earth and infects the town's residents. The main antagonist, Grant Grant, is the town's wealthy but corrupt resident who is transformed into one of the monsters after being infected by the meteorite. As the town becomes overrun with the monsters, a group of survivors, including Grant's wife, Starla, and the town's police chief, Bill Party, team up to try and stop the spread of the infection. They eventually discover that the monsters are being controlled by an alien entity that has taken over Grant's body and is using the monsters to spread their eggs throughout the town. As the survivors fight to stop the alien, they are confronted with the full extent of Grant's corruption and realize that he had been secretly orchestrating the infection in order to take over the town and transform its residents into his own personal army. In the end, the survivors manage to destroy the alien and stop the spread of the infection, but not before the town is left in ruins and many of its residents are killed or turned into monsters. Slither is a thrilling and grotesque tale of alien invasion and the lengths people will go to achieve their own twisted desires. The ending of Slither is a thrilling and action-packed one, with a team managing to stop the alien threat and save the world from destruction. It is also a poignant and emotional ending as Bill and Starla are forced to confront their own demons and come to terms with their past. Overall, the ending of Slither is a satisfying and memorable one and serves as a fitting conclusion to the film's storyline. <laughs> Teeth 2007 Teeth is a 2007 horror comedy film directed by Mitchell Lichtenstein. The film follows Dawn, a young woman who discovers that she has a rare condition called vagina dentata, which means she has a unique genetic trait that causes her to have teeth in her vagina. As she tries to come to terms with this strange and disturbing revelation, she is forced to confront a group of predatory men who try to exploit her. As she discovers her unique condition, she also learns about the power it gives her over men and begins to use it to fight back against those who have wronged her. Throughout the film, Dawn struggles with understanding and accepting her condition and learns to use it as a form of self-defense rather than a curse. She also confronts the traumas of her past and learns to embrace her sexuality and agency. While the film tackles some mature themes, it ultimately promotes the importance of consent and standing up for oneself in a way that is suitable for a growing audience, as it attempts to impart a positive message through a generally frowned upon genre of films. Teeth is a thought-provoking and empowering story about finding strength in one's own body. Teeth received mixed reviews upon its release, with some critics praising its unique and original premise, as well as its strong performances from the lead actors. However, others criticized the film for its graphic and disturbing content, 
as well as its over-the-top and campy tone. Overall, Teeth was a moderately successful film and gained a cult following in the years following its release. Passing through me through the expression. <laughs> The Human Centipede 2009 The Human Centipede is a horror film about a mad scientist named Dr. Hyder, who is obsessed with creating a human centipede, a surgical procedure in which multiple people are surgically attached together mouth to anus. The story begins when two American tourists, Lindsay and Jenny, get lost in the countryside of Germany and seek help from a mysterious villa. They are greeted by Dr. Hyder, who claims to be a retired surgeon. He offers them a place to stay for the night and they accept. However, they soon realize that they are not alone in the villa. There is another person present, a Japanese man named Katsuro. As the night wears on, the three of them begin to suspect that something is not right with Dr. Hyder. They overhear him talking to himself about his plan to create a human centipede and realize that they are in grave danger. They try to escape but are quickly captured and taken to Dr. Hyder's operating room. Dr. Hyder then proceeds to surgically attach Lindsay and Katsuro to each other with Lindsay's mouth sewn to Katsuro's anus. Jenny is also not spared from this fate and is forced to watch as Dr. Hyder creates a living, breeding human centipede. The Mad Doctor also puts Jenny at the end of the human centipede and wallows in his creation. He further trains the centipede as for his wishes and threatens to cut the unwilling participants' vocal cords if they show further resistance. As the days pass, the three victims are forced to live in a state of constant terror and disgust as they are fed through tubes and forced to live in their own filth. Eventually, due to the interference of two detectives who were attempting to investigate the villa, the three victims of the doctor attempt an escape and almost manage to break free from the estate. However, they are pursued by Dr. Hyder, who is determined to capture them and bring them back to complete the human centipede in all of its grotesque glory. In the end, out of the three victims, only Lindsay is left breathing as Katsuru takes his own life due to the torment he is facing while Jenny succumbs to her disease and her body gives up and she dies. This left Lindsay as the sole survivor and she is left to carry the burden of her traumatic experience due to the experiments the crazed doctor exposed her to. Lindsay did survive but not before suffering through a nightmarish experience that will stay with her for the rest of her life scarring her both mentally and physically. The film received mixed reviews upon its release, with many critics praising its unique and disturbing premise, but also criticizing its graphic violence and disturbing imagery. Despite this mixed reception, The Human Centipede has gained a strong following and has become a cult classic in the horror genre. It has also inspired two sequels, The Human Centipede 2 Full Sequence and The Human Centipede 3 Final Sequence. Overall, The Human Centipede has received an amazing critical response due to its unique and disturbing premise, which has helped it gain a strong following and become a cult classic in the horror genre. It has also inspired two sequels, further cementing its place in the horror pantheon. Conclusion Body horror movies are a unique and disturbing genre that explores the dark and twisted side of human anatomy and the psychological impact of physical transformations. From grotesque mutations to body dysmorphia, these films leave a lasting impression on viewers and challenge the limits of what we consider normal or acceptable in terms of the human form. Whether it's through the use of practical effects or CGI, body horror movies continue to push the boundaries of what we can stomach on screen, leaving a lasting impact on the horror genre as a whole. In conclusion, body horror is a genre that is not for everyone due to its graphic and disturbing nature. However, it has a separate fan base drawn to the shocking and grotesque elements depicted in these films. If you're a fan of body horror, then the previously mentioned films are all must-sees. Regardless of personal preferences, it is undeniable that these films have made a significant impact on the horror genre and continue to be celebrated by fans of body horror to this day. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!